Hey everyone, this is The Baylor. I am the Baylor behind the Scooby Dooby Doo channel. Um, and this is the first video of 2018. So, welcome to the channel. If this is your first time, this is a fun place to be. So, be sure to hit the subscribe button and like this video because today, what we're going to take a quick look at is creating mutations and input object types inside of GraphQL and Ruby. So, we are playing around Bitcoin. Is not a thing anymore but it kind of was a big thing and so it's kind of a big thing now but it's not really as much as it was but it is kind of still and so i thought it'd be fun to create a fun little app where we can pretend that we have millions and millions of bitcoins it doesn't have to be bitcoins but that is what is so famous or popular so what we've done here is we are listing out a transaction type transactions have an id the number of coins spent the item that was purchased and we have a like an ad hoc summary where we turn our coins and item into a sentence and so you could see when i ran this query that we got back my recent purchases obviously real purchases and not you know inspired by silly things so what we're going to do now is we want to have right now we only have the default test field mutation so if we try to run this and we create a transaction and we'll ignore the typo if we run test field, you can see it says I'm a real string because this is true. It is true. It is a real string. So what we're going to do real quick is we're going to hop into our command line. And that is because this is the greatest place to be. And something we can look at is if we run Rails G without any arguments, it'll show us everything that's available to us. And some of these are very interesting to us because these are for GraphQL. And so we can create new mutation objects, we can create objects themselves, unions, and the whole nine yards, the whole kit and caboodle. And so what we're looking at today is we've already created an object. So I'll take a quick look at that. So here's our transaction type. I created this through the Rails generator. I just wanted to see how it worked. And as you can see, I've added just a few default things such as the name of the transaction type a handful of fields and our ad hoc field where we turn our object fields or I guess fields, properties, things that are Ruby related for properties, um, attributes, our, we turn our attributes into a string. And so what we want to do now is create a new mutation, right? Because right now all we have is test field. And what we want to do is be able to create a new transaction. And so what we're going to do is we're going to hop into our transaction type. And you can see this is basically, I, I had to rewrite this, but it's basically what ships whenever you create a new GraphQL installation with Rails. And we can delete this because we no longer need it. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a new field called transaction create. This returns a non-null instance of types transaction type. And to resolve this, we take in our object, our args, and our context, which we don't care very much about. And for simplicity, we're going to say transaction.create. And here we're going to pass in our args transaction. And we're going to pile call to H here. Now, if you're paying attention, you're thinking, well, dude, man, like where do these this transaction argument come from, right? And this is a new thing we've if you've only learned GraphQL from this channel, um, I'm, I'm sorry. But more, more seriously, we haven't actually looked at arguments in depth before. So this is a new thing. And so what we need to do here is we need to define what arguments are available. And so for simplicity, what we'll do is instead of actually doing something real, instead we're just going to return back our arguments message. And we're going to do something very different uh, just so they can play with us. And so we tell GraphQL that when we have this field, we want to have a new thing called an argument. It's going to be a message, and we'll make this a type of string, and we use the bang to indicate that it is required. So now if we refresh and we go to our mutation type here, you can see that we have transaction trait, and it takes a message, and it is a string. Returns back a transaction. That's wrong. Um, I, that might actually cause a problem. So we'll change that type to string. Perfect. So now we have transaction create. And if we try to run this transaction create, if we tried to run it without anything, you can see it says we're missing the required argument for message. And so this turns it into being like a function almost. And so you can see we pass in a message and it's just an object and we say hello world. And when we run this, you can see that GraphQL gives us back this transaction create for hello world. So when you define an argument, you actually use these like a JSON object or uh, keyword arguments in Ruby and Python. 
And so what we, or I guess they're not really the same in Python, but they're similar. They have the same name at least. So we're gonna undo our changes here. We're gonna get back to the good old days when we just had this transaction create, but we took in an argument type for transaction. What we wanna do here is before, when I did this argument for message, I said this was a type of string. And this is fine, except for the fact that it restricts us to passing in a bunch of arguments into a single method call. So you can think of this like if we were going to pass in more than just coins and item here to build a transaction, we might have five, six, seven of these arguments and that becomes a little bit unwieldy. And it especially becomes difficult when you start trying to use your GraphQL um, API with variables and the JavaScript objects. So the better way to do this is to instead of taking an argument for a message where it's a scalar, what's better is we're gonna say that we have an argument it's a transaction, but it's type, it's actually gonna be a types of transaction input type. So we haven't defined this yet, and we can create this fast because we can come back to our Rails generator for our GraphQL object, and we're just gonna say that we have a transaction input. And you see this creates a new file, and if we open this file up, you can see it's defined this class. This is not correct. We need to change this from regular object type to input object type. And inside of here, we're gonna basically mirror what we need to create a transaction. And so we're gonna have an argument inside of here that's gonna have coins. This is a type of float. And we have another argument for the item purchase. This is a type of string. And so now what'll happen is when we refresh, we look at our documentation and we go to transaction create, you can see this has an argument for a transaction and encapsulates all these other arguments for our coins and our item. And so you can imagine that if you're in JavaScript here, you could actually build out an entire transaction. Well, we'll do this, we'll show you. If you're passing in your variables, you might say that I have my transaction and we don't have to name the variable. We, we get to define the variable however we want to do it. So we'll say my transaction is a type of transaction input and it's required. We'll bring things out so we can kind of see them a little bit. And so this is saying, well, this isn't is invalid because it's have coins and items. So here what we do have to actually follow suit to what transaction input type requires. We have in coins and we'll say that we're spending a thousand coins. And we have to think of something really quick while we're here and we're gonna buy a pair of socks. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this variable, my transaction, it can be an object, you think you're passing something in here is a JavaScript object or a JSON object, and we come to our transaction create method. When we look at this, it's gonna ask for a transaction. We can say we wanna use my, my transaction variable, and when we get this out, we'll just get the ID and the summary. And so if we run this, you can see we get an error. And if we look at our source code, it looks like trans, transaction. Let's try it again. Come over here, run it, and kaboom. You can see that it gives us back our transaction create. It has our new idea for it. it says you spent a thousand coins on one sock, on a one sock. And if we come back over and run our all transactions query, you can see this was the newest one. I have this set to order by descending on the created at. And so you can see we paid a thousand coins for one sock and then it writes it out for us in a nice, beautiful manner. Uh, that creates a joy for everyone, I'm sure. So thank you for watching this video. Oh, I, I guess I should also mention real quick, this is important, it's super important, and I meant to talk about it and I forgot and I apologize because I know that's very frustrating. And you know, when people just don't, okay, I'll get to it. The, the benefit of naming our field name like this is it reads better if we said something like create transaction, like that. That reads better in English because uh, your verb is first and then you have your noun. The downside of doing it this way is that if you had 50 mutations, your mutations would all be like create and then noun. It, it's easier for when you're looking through documentation if you put all your nouns first and your verbs as the second word because then when you're looking at documentation and you hop into like, I wanna see what's on the mutation type, you would see here's everything for transaction. And if you had more things like items specifically, you might say, well, here's all the items and here's all our wallets and whatever happens with Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies that I don't fully understand. It makes sense to having the nouns first because it groups everything together. 
And so that is the reason why it's called transaction create. And this is called just transactions. Of course, this is verb for or noun first as well. So naturally, I've just did a fantastic job segueing into a conclusion that um, this video is over. If you have any questions, or if you have anything you'd like to see, I plan on next week having a video where we take this mutations, what we've learned here, and turn this into a um, subscriptions with GraphQL so that we can actually watch a web application update in real time as we play with our transactions most likely. It'll probably be the same thing. If not, it'll be something different and I'll show it to you then. So thank you for watching this video and goodbye.